Howdy folks, in this tutorial series, we're gonna go over the terminal and how to use the command line. Uh, having knowledge of the command line is gonna be incredibly useful for you. Um, if you're just a programmer or something starting out right now, or if you're a seasoned developer and you haven't really dug into the command line, uh, this series will be for you. We'll go into some of the basics and we'll go on and get into some more, more advanced things. You know, some of the things you can, basic things you can do on the terminal is you can create files, you can uh, create directories, you can search through files, you can SSH to servers or kind of, kind of log into servers, you can copy files to servers, you can see all your files, you can move files, copy files. There's all kinds of different things you can do with this. And yeah, some of it you can do through the, uh, like a, a GUI that you've maybe used before where you like manually go and search for your files and move them around with the mouse. Here you can do it all on the command line. And once you know the command line, you can start navigating your system much faster. And some things that you're doing programming, you're gonna need to know how to, how to do the command line. You can get away with not using it for a little while, but it's something you need to know and it'll take your, your skills to the next level. So let's just dive right in. The first, first thing we're gonna go over is, you know, a couple of commands. The first thing you wanna do is open the terminal. This is gonna be geared towards using Linux or Mac. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can use the Windows, the WSL, which is Windows subsystem for Linux, which you can also run the same commands on. Uh, I will be running this on a Mac. But to open the terminal, you can go to your finder on the Mac. I'm just saying command, uh, command space and you can type in terminal and open it. I already have mine open and a lot of times I put it as a doc down here just so I have good reference for it. Uh, but so now that, that brings me to just kind of opens it up and brings me to some some directory. And this might be foreign to you right now, but I'm going to type PWD. PWD means print working directory and it's going to kind of show me where in in the my file system I'm at. Like you might be familiar with, with using like Finder where like here I have documents. Mine might be like the path to here might be users will Brock slash documents. Whereas here you can see it here. I'm in the CLI demo. That's a directory I've created just to kind of do this, do this demo. So that, that'll show you like where you are in the, in the system right now. So we can do LS ls will list what is in the directory so this is showing exactly what is in my directory so i have a file named bar.txt and foo.txt and if you were to go to your your uh your finder you could do that you could go to this this uh this directory and, and see those files files there so so that's that's the ls using ls will be a command you'll use quite often i use it all the time because i'm I'm never sure like where I'm at or, or like where I'm at in the terminal more or less. Like, so I'll just kind of always go do LS, um, to, to kind of see that, uh, if you wanted to see hidden files, you would do LS dash LA. That'll give you a little bit more, more info. Um, it'll kind of give you the permissions of the files as well. Uh, but let's say like, let's say we wanted to see what is inside one of these files. And there's a few different ways you can do that. So let's, let's see what is inside bar, bar.txt. So I'm just going to do ls again, just because, so I can kind of see where I'm at. So I can use the cat command. The cat command will basically just dump the file out to the terminal screen. So if I do cat bar.txt, and you can see, see I actually didn't um, type out that whole thing. You can actually, as you're going, you can tab. Um, and it'll, it'll kind of find an auto completes for you. So you just can tab, but so let me, let me cat that. And it says, hello there. So that is, um, what is in the file? So that's showing, showing you exactly what is in that file. So if you wanted to read a file, uh, you, you can do that. You can also use less, which will, um, Read the file, but it, it kind of puts you in an interactive mode. It doesn't just listen to the screen. So if I push Q, it kind of it kind of goes away. You see how there's that text is not there, but when I hit cat, it's still on the screen. 
Well, with less, you can kind of search through it. So this isn't the best example because there's not much text in there, but you can always, uh, you can kind of search through the file if you want. So maybe this was a large file and I wanted to search for the text there. I could do forward slash there or whatever I wanted to search for. And, and you can kind of see it there. I wouldn't worry about too much, you know, how to use less because it, it can get complicated. Um, but now that I want to get, I want to get out of it, I hit Q and, and Q will get me out of the, uh, out of the less. All right. So we know how to, you know, view files. We know how to print the working directory. We know how to view the output of files. So let's say we, I wanted to just, uh, create a file. Let's just create a dummy file. So I could use touch touch will allow me to create a file. Let's just name it. Will. Uh, so now I've created the file. So if I do LS, now I've got a file name will.txt. There is nothing in that file. Uh, because all I did was, all I did was, uh, create it. If I wanted to actually, um, add something to the, to the file, I could do, you know, echo foobar. You know, if I just do echo foobar, it's just going to output it to the terminal. But what I can actually do is I can pipe this to a new file with the, with this operator here with the greater than operator. And let's just name it some output.txt. So now foobar should be inside the some output. And you can see that it created, it did create it. So I hit L, I used LS again. So now let's use cat to view it. And here, there's my, there's my foobar. That is, that is great. So I've got a foobar there. So let me, let's say I, I, let's say I screwed up. I don't need that file anymore. So let me remove that file. I can use the RM command. Uh, so I'm gonna do RM some output. And you can see I'm not typing out the whole word cause I can just tap because it'll kind of match. So I can just remove some output LS again, and you can see that it is not there anymore. So, so, so that is gone. So we know how to, you know, add and remove files. Now, a lot of times you might like add a file and then go into it in Vim. I'm not going to go over Vim right now. That'll be at a later one. Uh, but it's a way you can just, you can add and do different things to, you know, while in, you're inside the file. But now let's say we wanted to make a directory. We can use the make, make dir uh, command, which will make a directory. And let's, let's name it, um, wills dir. So now we have a, a directory named wills dir. So that's great. Um, we can also let's, let's do an LS on the directory. So let's do LS, you know, previously we've been doing LS like that, but maybe we want to, we want to do an LS and see what's inside Will's directory. We could do LS will, you see how I'm, tr I'm tabbing right here and it's bringing up the two. So there's not an exact match. So I have to provide it like that, the, the extra match. And then I tab again. Um, it'll, it'll fill that in for me. So there's a lot of times you won't actually type in the whole commands because you can kind of tab through it. Once you get to the no enough text that it, it can know what your, what, um, what directory your path you're trying to find. So let's LS the, the wills directory. Well, I don't have anything in there, so nothing returns. Okay. So let's, let's add a file and wills dir. But how, how do we do that? Um, we get, we'll use the touch again, but we're not inside of wills dir. So if we just do touch, you know, a dot txt, it's going to be in our current directory. It's not going to be in wills dir. You see, we're in CLI demo. We're not in CLI demo slash wills dir. So what we need to do is let's, let's change to wills dir. And what you can, what you do with that is you use the CD command chain called short for change directory. 
So I want to go into Will's Dir. So CD Will's Dir. So now, now if I do PWD, you can see it now I'm in Will's Dir. I should have named that something better. Will's Dir just kind of sounds weird when I keep repeating that, but bear with me. But you can see now we're, we're in that directory. So if I do LS, there is nothing, nothing there. But now, now let's touch the file. Let's touch, you know, um, joe.txt. Do ls again, and I've got joe.txt. Great. So now, I've, now, like, let's say I've done what I needed to do in Will's dir. Now I want to go back into cli-demo. I want to get back into that directory. And the way to do that is you can use a CD command again, and you can do dot dot, which will go back a directory. That'll go back, that'll go up one directory. So we're in Will's dir, the dot dot will bring us back to CLI demo. So if we do LS, now we've got, uh, now we're back in our, our main directory that we've been working with. All right. So, so that's the basics of some commands. We will touch on more of these commands as we go through this series. Uh, you'll see them being used. You'll see them being used in slightly different ways. There's there's more arguments that can be passed to them. Um, but this is a kind of a these are a good starter to kind of get you started with, you know, navigating the terminal and all of that. Um, so yeah, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.